Hello and welcome in to another edition of River Dragons Weekly. I'm VP of Communications and play-by-play -play voice Zach DeBozart here to take you through another jam-packed show. Now, last weekend we made our way up to western New York to take on the Elmira Enforcers and finish off our season series. Fans might remember last time we played Elmira, it was a couple of very close games at the Civic Center. It was the home opener, home debut of your Columbus River Dragons. We had over 4,000 fans for that night. It was awesome and we're seeing crowds start to raise up to that level again so we know fan supports there we know you're watching the show we know you're pay paying attention into the games and we just want to say thanks we appreciate you and we're here to tell you all about the things river dragons because you love it so much with that in mind let's take a look here at the highlights from friday night Laporte chips it up ahead. Liracos right wing circle. Liracos takes it behind the net on the backhand looking for a passing lane. Left circle chipping it across. That one knocked down and look out here comes Babanko on a rush. Babanko he's got Mini with him. Babanko four on one left wing across they score. <laughs> Trumbly ahead for Bondarenko. That one went through the stick of Liracos and Dion has it in his own end. Far side circle. Columbus finishes their change. Stretch pass ahead. Jurich on a breakaway. Backhand. What a save Karpinski. Denying Tyler Jurich of his second of the night. Takes his time, chips it ahead, right into the path of Fallis. Fallis going to get it to Graham, who's in on sides, left wing. MJ Graham stops it up, pass back door, he scores! Jay Krupp, beauty of a feed from MJ Graham, and we're tied. Far side, off the wall, Bondarenko, too far for him. Martin takes it, trying to get it out. Bondarenko pinched on the near side wall. Now Shapitzen tried to come in, he takes Bondarenko out of the play. Here's a three-on-two rush for Elmira. Stevens dropping it back. Jurich fires and he scores! For him, Dion plays it off the short glass. Liracos in front of his own bench, had it taken away by Tucker, feeds it ahead to Michaelis, two on two. Michaelis waits, Deeks has some space, left circle, back door, what a save, Karpinski! Mafu's absolutely denied as Karpinski went post to post and got the left pillow in time. Karpinski slows it up, plays it to Howie near sideboards, and he'll push the issue as we're just under a minute, we're just over a minute to go here in the second. Now Elmira reverses it back. Mafu's right circle, two on one. Mafu's across. Tucker scores. <laughs> for Graham, sticked away by passing him. Now Graham with it near side. High top circle. Fallis pad save. Rebound there. Fallis still with it. He fires, set it high. Croup with a chance. Sliding block. Yarwood prevents it from going to the crease. Check. Still with it. Through his legs. Fallis trying to move it. And it goes for Elmira as Stevens will move it. Not out. Schapitzen left point of shot. Stick save made. Rebound loose there. Croup waits. Waits. Still with it. And he rang the outside of the net. Go into the neutral zone. Liracos recollects at the red line. Howie with it here. Upper Liracos. Right wing side. He gets the feet moving. Liracos backhand across. It's there. And a save made by Passingham. And pinches down there on Yarwood. Elmira finds it, able to send it off the boards. Here's Tucker dumping it down. He rang it off the post. Jay Crew picks himself up after he tried to block that shot. Liracos laying it back. Look out, a shot, and they score. A tough game for the River Dragons. Had their moments, especially in the third period. You could tell they had their chances, but just couldn't bury him. It just seemed to be one of those nights where the River Dragons were a little bit snake bitten and ran into a hot goalie. Well, Saturday, would they change their fortunes around? Let's find out. Here's how Saturday night looked. Mafuz letting this one go on the far wall. Michaelis recollects. High slot. Back for Mafuz. Right circle. Couldn't pull the trigger. Going across. Tucker on the back end. Michaelis, they score. Puck finds the right wing corner in the Columbus offensive zone. Patterson, bad cycle. Croup to the middle. Bonarenko fires. Score! Ivan Bondarenko picking the top right corner, and the River Dragons have tied it up. And he falls over on top of Passingham. Yarwood checking over on that damage. Meanwhile, Michaelis left circle a shot, blocked by Ozelinch. Back to the middle, they score. <laughs> Sending this one ahead, Patterson to Pease. Now a long stretch pass to Jurich. One on one against Howie. Jurich trying to box out Howie. Oh my goodness, what a goal! Shapitson lost that stick clash battle. Look out, Babanko gets around Clauston. Babanko on a breakaway backhand. Save made Karpinski. Penalty coming up here. Ozelinch rims this one around. Went over Minnie's head. Tucker has it at the red line. Tucker swept it away. Missed it there. Laporte trying to go in a race. Laporte firing. Score! Will Laporte battling for the puck and chipped it over Troy Passingham. Goes loose in front of the Elmira bench. Babanko trying to get around Kugler. Howie forcing pressure left wing corner to the middle. Harrison, and they score. Rimmed around by Martin, found by Jurich. Jurich, but both defensemen come back for Columbus. Jurich trying to get through Kugler, moving it to the high slot. Pease scores. 
Now Bondarenko, stretch pass ahead for Krupp, two on one. Krupp waits, Deeks, Gino Mini blocked it. Bondarenko to the middle, loose there in front. Graham banging it away, they score! MJ Graham banging it away out of chaos. And we've got a hockey game still. Now for Columbus. Gerson wins it, Shapitzen holds in left point. Look out, Harrison with a chance. Gets around Clouston, three on out break. Harrison scores. Unfortunate on the road trip to only take, well actually to take zero points out of it and did not even be able to get a game to overtime to take any points. But to be honest with you, it, it was a very back and forth action packed series and you know, sometimes the bounces, they just don't go your way. Sometimes your opponent just a little bit faster than you in certain spots and you know what? That's just hockey, that's the way it goes. But you know what, what you gotta do is move on, forget about that last weekend and look ahead to the future because the River Dragons have a bright future coming up ahead. They have got four of their next five games at home, so that means a chance for you, River Dragons fans, to come on out, support your team, get loud at the Civic Center and cheer on the boys for them to try and break this little skid and get back to their winning ways. There's two games against the Menor Icebreakers and a game against the Carolina Thunderbirds. That game is on the road, so two out of the next three, and three game weekend are at home and then a two set with the Battle Creek Rumblebees the week after. We'll get into that a little bit later on in tonight's show. We'll also hear from Edgars Ozelinch. You might have caught him a little bit in those highlights. The big number 13 is back on the ice for your River Dragons. Missed about four or five weeks. We'll talk with him about what it was like to miss that sort of time, how he was able to come back from the injury and just how happy he is to be back out on the ice with the team because we know you guys are happy to see him there and again you'll be seeing him this weekend when Ozelinch and the rest of the River Dragons take on the Menor Icebreakers. I want to remind fans, with those games, we've had some confusion. The Menor Icebreakers series was originally scheduled in Menor, Ohio, but an agreement was reached, and the games are now being played in the Columbus Civic Center. So administratively, there's still Menor Icebreakers home games, but they're here in Columbus, and you have a chance to get tickets thanks to PMB Broadcasting, WTVM, and... Uh, Chattahoochee Harley Davidson. All three have helped to combine to give a $9 ticket offer to you, the River Dragons fans. $9 general admission gets you into the doors this weekend, Friday and Saturday. See the Menor Icebreakers and sit anywhere you want for just $9. And then, of course, the Battle Creek Rumblebees. One thing to note, games. Well, the game was originally on the 14th, got moved to the 13th in the offseason, but is now back to the 14th on that Friday. Whether your tickets say 13th or 14th, your tickets will be honored for that game on Friday night against Battle Creek. And also, if you were at our game, our 11-9 game on January 11th, when there was a storm outside and it was just a crazy day outside, if you were able to brave that storm, we gave you a slip. We'll remind you fans as well, that February 14th game, you'll be able to get into that game for free. But again, more details on that later later on in the show. Until then, it's time for us to take a break. When we come back, we'll be here with Edgars Ozelinch, hear about how the big Latvian came over to North America, became a professional hockey player, and how much he loves being down here in Columbus. It's all up after this. Don't go anywhere. The best damn spirits in the world. We say that because we care about what we do. The premium quality of our spirits doesn't come from some secret recipe or magic water. It comes from our desire to craft the best damn spirits in the world. Swamp Fox Distilling Company. Premium, small batch spirits made with pride in Buena Vista, Georgia. Now available at your favorite local package store. Epic battles, wicked shots, and a lot of attitude. Bring on the heat. The River Dragons are back in town. It's not a game. It's medieval. We'll sell you the entire seat, but you'll only need the edge. Be part of it this weekend as your Columbus River Dragons burn up the ice. Call 706-507-4625 or go to rdragons.com. Let Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. Issues. Not pretty in your sink. Not pretty on your house. Weather interference. Also not a pretty picture. 
and those long-term contracts and early cancellation fees, the fine print is pretty ugly. With Beam, there are no contracts, channels you want, high-speed internet, and no data caps, and above all, local customer service. Now that's pretty. Ask us today about our contract buyout special in cable and internet bundles. Beam, we're powered by you. Welcome back into River Dragons Weekly. It's now time for our player interview segment. Today, our special guest, none other than number 13, Edgar Zozelin. Edgar, thanks for taking the time. Thank you for inviting me over here. It feels weird to call you that. We all call you Ozo on the bus. I mean, it's just kind of a common hockey nickname, so I'm going to refer to you that for the rest of the interview, if that's okay. For sure. <laughs> so, Ozo, uh, last weekend you came back into the lineup after missing the last few weeks uh, due to an injury. For you personally, what was it like rehabbing and getting yourself back up to game speed, and then how did it feel to be back out there with the boys? Uh, well, first of all, yeah, I, I was out for, I think, five weeks, and uh, I think that was first time in my whole life that I've been out five weeks in the middle of season. So uh, it was kind of hard to watch the boys playing because when you are injured, that's the time when you really, really miss hockey and you want to be back on the ice and be with your team. But um, I think I... Did everything what I had to do to recover and um, came out. Uh, first few shifts in the first game was a little bit weird, just 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 because you know. But then as the game was going on, I think I I, I got I catched the game speed back and I, I felt amazing. So. I'm very happy to be back, and yeah. Well, I'm sure the fans are happy to have you back uh, yeah. on the ice, and of course, uh, with home games coming up, uh, they'll get a chance to see you live and in person. You mentioned you know it's the first time you've missed that long of a chunk in the middle of the season, and that's impressive for you because you know we go back and we check your stats, even going back to where you played at your home country in Latvia, and you've been playing junior professional hockey for about ten or so years now, yeah. so it's been quite a long career for you. Let's start with what it was like playing in Latvia, growing up there, and trying to become a professional hockey player through those ranks? Well, obviously different, different style, different thinking, different coaching. Uh, I'm not going to lie. When I was younger, my dream was never to come here to North America. Wow, my really? My dream was always to go somewhere in Russia or Germany or Sweden. And I think I was 17 and uh, we did like a, a national team kind of tournament mm -hmm. over in Canada in Toronto and that was my first time playing uh, in North America and as soon as I stepped on the ice over here I just felt like wow this is this is something what I want to do this is where I want to be and um, yeah I was I was lucky that I had few friends who were over here in America and who helped me to uh, to get some connections and um, I think uh, my first year was in Montana in Great Falls. It was it was it was hard because that's about ten thousand miles away from home. <laughs> no kidding. Middle it's... of nowhere, kind of. Yeah. And you show up and you don't know anyone. Like you don't know anyone. So you, I had to start from all the way from the bottom, and. Um, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> hey, you know what? You're doing pretty well, too. Was was there a language barrier issue, too? Well, because, I mean, with Latvian, and I don't know if Latvian's a language, but, I mean, yeah. you probably speak a different language from when you come over to North America, right? Yeah, well, we have our own language. It's Latvian language. Uh, we also speak Russian because uh, Latvia was a part of Soviet Union. And uh, English, English is just an uh, international language, so that's what I took it school but obviously when I came over here my English wasn't like this <laughs> so uh, you Not know it was, to make friends you don't know sometimes words. it was just like little things like uh, when I play juniors I live with uh, billets with a uh -huh. family so they helped me a lot and there was just sometimes like a simple questions hey are you starving and I'm like no and, and like my billet mom knew what she was asking me and she's like are you hungry and I was like yes I am like, things like that but uh, obviously when you're around the language you uh, you're just getting better you're picking it up and 
Definitely. You've been, well, the Great Falls year that I checked for you is 2011-12. Here we are in 2019-20. So you've been in North America now for about eight years. I say your English has improved, obviously. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, you made your professional debut here in America with the Danville Dashers of this league in 2013-14. And then you've been through a number of different places in this league. Danville, Port Huron, uh, Berlin, Steel City even. Yeah. I mean, teams that don't exist anymore, yeah. you have stories from. What's it been like for you to just see how this league has grown and, and be in all the different places you've been in? Well, when I when I came first in this league, there was four teams. Now it's, uh, <laughs> it's a 10-team league. There you go. And uh, obviously, it's also a four-letter league now. <laughs> there was three letters before. But uh, no, overall, I think the league is getting bigger. And that's it's all about uh, getting bigger, uh, having more, I think, more younger guys kind of a mix of a younger and older guys like let's say like older guys like me who's been around the league who can help the younger guys to develop to move up and if the league keeps doing that I think it's only it's on the right path. Danville, Steel City, Dayton, Port Huron, Berlin, Port Huron again, and now Columbus. Yeah. So you spent the most time, it looks like, in Port Huron. It looks like parts of about two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I remember we, uh, Columbus had selected you as part of the expansion draft. What was that news like for you? Because you had been in Port Huron for a couple of years to get that news that you're going to a new team. I won't say farther from home, but I mean, when you consider you've been in Montana, Michigan, now Georgia, you've seen, seems like, all corners of this country. It's true. Uh, <laughs> Well, as a hockey player, this is just a new place for me. You know, it's still, your job is the same. You still play hockey and, you know, you just have to be ready for anything. Like any day, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. You can get traded, you can get called up, you can, you know, like a lot of things can happen. So. <laughs> yeah, they definitely can. How do you like it down here, though? I mean, oh. since you've been in Columbus, a lot of the guys love the weather, obviously. That's so what number one, definitely <laughs> the weather. Uh, no, I think community out here is really big. We, we definitely have the biggest rink. We have the most fans in the league. And uh, that's, a, that's a, another new experience, because in some places where I played, like, uh, like a Steel City, we just didn't have any fans, you know? We had... 100, 200 people every night, and then you play here where we have sometimes even 4,000, right? So mm -hmm. it's something new again. Uh, but weather, community, you know, uh, the history of the past, what has been here, that's, that's big. Be a part of something new. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, Ozo, it's, it's been a lot of fun to have you here. And I mean, you know, with how far back you go in this league, we can keep you for another 20 minutes. But we have to get going here soon. Uh, just one last here's, thing. Here's one thing. Yeah, yeah I, I was, I'm, I'm probably the only one uh, guy in the league with over 200 games without a ring. So I think, well, no. I think I have to play in this league until I win. So. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to ask you about that, but you're right. That is a point for you. Uh, but what I was going to ask you about is you have uh, a record of your own uh, that you hold in your own personal regard. Why don't you tell the fans about that? Well, I... Uh, You've been playing I, for so long. Uh, yeah, I have some penalty minutes before. So uh, uh, I think someone, somebody told me that Right now, I'm in the 10th place from European-born players in North America to holding the most penalty minutes in a, uh, in a single league in a minor hockey in yeah. the whole, like, North America. Not far away from being the first, but uh, I'm not like a year away. It's more like two, three years to to. Well, I mean, like like you said, if you want to play in this league as long as you can, maybe you might get there. As long as I can win, as long as I rise the cup. <laughs> I tell you what, Ozo, it's been a pleasure to have you here, and uh, we'll probably see you around in the near future. Thank you so much. All right, Edgar's Ozo Lynch on River Dragons Weekly. Stick around. When we come back. We look ahead to a three and three weekend. Two with the Menor Icebreakers. One with the Carolina Thunderbirds. It's up next. Don't go anywhere. At Georgia Power, we believe our lake should be filled with water, not trash. That a healthy honeybee population will pollinate a healthier environment. That building homes is just as important as powering them. That's why we believe what we do off the grid is just as important as the clean
clean, safe, reliable, affordable energy we provide on it. And that's a different kind of energy. Whether you're heading to an off-road destination, creating the perfect lawn, or preparing the fields, think SunSouth, where you'll find quality John Deere equipment, affordably priced to help you tackle the tough jobs. Think SunSouth, for those that do. The best damn spirits in the world. We say that because we care about what we do. The premium quality of our spirits doesn't come from some secret recipe or magic water. It comes from our desire to craft the best damn spirits in the world. Swamp Fox Distilling Company. Premium, small batch spirits made with pride in Buena Vista, Georgia. Now available at your favorite local package store. Hmm, Golden Corral's carved New York strip and jumbo butterfly shrimp. Make me feel like a real New Yorker. Hey, I'm eating here. <laughs> New York strip and butterfly shrimp. Golden Corral, the only one for everyone. Issues, not pretty in your scene, not pretty on your house. Weather interference, also not a pretty picture. And those long-term contracts and early cancellation fees, the fine print is pretty ugly. With Beam, there are no contracts, channels you want, high-speed internet, and no data caps, and above all, local customer service. Now that's pretty. Ask us today about our contract buyout special in cable and internet bundles. Beam, we're powered by you. Welcome back into River Dragons Weekly. A big thanks to Ozo, Edgar's Ozo Lynch, number 13, for joining us in on River Dragons Weekly. It was great to see him back out on the ice, even though the River Dragons didn't take any points out of Elmira. It was just good to have that big body back there on the blue line. And you know, as the River Dragons get more healthy and get more guys in and out of the lineup, it's going to be a good time as we head through this second half of the season and push towards those playoffs. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the FPHL standings as they sit right now. We have games on Friday and Saturday, so we don't got to worry like we did last week about, oh, this game might go this way because of we're recording the show. We know that these are the standings right here on this Thursday, and we'll go ahead and start in the Western Division. Carolina Thunderbirds continue to lead the division, but they had a rough weekend against the Danbury Hattricks. Hattricks took eight out of the nine points from Carolina, has dropped Carolina's point percentage underneath 800. Still with 81 points in 34 games, though, they're cruising pretty solidly at number one in the West. Danville sits number two, just a couple of percentage points ahead of Port Huron. Danville with 65 points in 35 games. Port Huron with 59 points in 32 games. That's a .004 points percentage difference. So two and three, that battle right now for home ice in the Western Division, very interesting. Your Columbus River Dragons sitting in fourth right now, 42 points on 33 games. With a three-point game every single night, River Dragons, they get a little bit hot. They'll find themselves right up there in the mix with Danville and Port Huron. And remember, there's a couple of big games coming up with the Dashers later on this season in March and April that Columbus sort of holds their own fate in their hands when it comes to that race. The Battle Creek Rumblebees, they're now up to four points on the season. Uh, they picked up an overtime loss in Watertown that was on Saturday night. So Battle Creek, four points on 35 games played, 38 points back of the River Dragons. Not exactly close to clinching playoffs just yet. Yet, but it's one of those things we get in the second half of the season you're always paying attention to. Over in the Eastern Division, as we mentioned, the Danbury Hattricks continue to lead the way, taking eight of nine points from the Carolina Thunderbirds. Their win percentage sits at 686, 72 points on 35 games played, creating some space between them and Watertown, who are nine points back, and Danbury has a game played as well. Elmira with 58 points after they came away with all six against your River Dragons, moved them securely into third place over the Matter Icebreakers, who sit at 45 points on 36 games played. And then there's the Delaware Thunder, 24 points on 32 games played. That's the way the standings look right now. We take a look at the schedule this upcoming weekend. Four teams are going to be playing three and threes, including your Columbus River Dragons. River Dragons are at the Menor Icebreakers. We put those in quotation marks because administratively they're home games for Menor, but they're played at the Columbus Civic Center. And remember that, $9 tickets, thanks to PMB Broadcasting, Chattahoochee, Harley-Davidson, and more. Make sure and uh, make sure to check those out. And a big thanks to all those guys for making those ticket deals happen. After the Menor games, the River Dragons will then head to Winston-Salem and take on the Carolina Thunderbirds for a 405 puck drop there. The other two teams, we'll talk about those in a little bit, doing the three and threes. The rest of the Friday night schedule, Danbury, 
Missouri at Delaware, Watertown at Carolina, Port Huron at Battle Creek, and Elmira at Danville. And those will all stay the same except for the Danbury and Delaware games. Those will flip-flop in the home and home. So Saturday's game will be in the Thunderdome in Harrington, Delaware. Then after the Saturday games, Elmira will head from Danville and go to Port Huron. Basically on their way back to New York, they're going to make a quick stop in Michigan and the Port Huron Prowlers, who will have to travel back from Battle Creek, will take on Elmira. It's a 3 o'clock puck drop on that Sunday. We drop the puck with Carolina in Winston-Salem at 4.05. That's a look at the schedule as it stands right now. And now real quickly, I want to throw up something you're going to find on our social medias if you search us there, Columbus River Dragons on Facebook and C underscore River Dragons on Twitter and Instagram. So this is a little calendar graphic we've made up for you, the fans, because there's been a lot of changes and a lot of just general chaos, it seems like, going on with our schedule. If you were listening in the first segment of the show, you might have said, well, wait, that makes sense, but then this, then this. Trust me, we're going to try and lay it out for you here visually to have it make more sense. So, as I said this weekend, the Men are Icebreakers games are away games for the River Dragons, but they're here at the Columbus Civic Center because of an administrative agreement. That's the $9 tickets that you can purchase right now at the Civic Center box office or on Ticketmaster. $9 gets you in the door and lets you sit wherever you want in the Civic Center. We are on the road. That's Sunday. That's going to come up on Sunday the 9th. Then, next week, Battle Creek is in town for a two-game set. That will be on the 14th and 15th. Now, some of you folks out there, including season ticket holders, have tickets that say on the 13th. Those tickets will be honored. There is no need to exchange. There is no need to do anything to flip-flop or worry about it. If you have tickets that say February 13th because of the late shift in date uh, between the River Dragons and the Civic Center and an agreement there, Basically, as long as you have ticket for it, either 13th or the 14th, you are guaranteed to get into that game for your seat. Also, if you remember, from January 11th, that 11 to 9, just craziness game we had against Port Huron, there was a crazy storm outside. Well, ownership and Scott Brand, our president and general manager, came onto the ice. If you were at the game, you remember, you received a free entry into that February 14th game. So, those blue tickets that you got from that January 11th game, hold on to those, bring those to the Civic Center on February 14th. There's no advanced exchanging on these. The blue tickets for February 14th, bring them in, and it's a free entry into the 200 level at that game. You got everything? Good. There will be a test later, but make sure you have that cheat sheet. Again, you can find it on our social medias, Columbus River Dragons on Facebook, C underscore River Dragons on Twitter and Instagram, and we'll be sending you updates through our social medias, and if you're a season ticket holder, you'll be getting emails as well to remind you of everything that's going on just so you're not too confused on all the general craziness. Now, there is one more thing I want to tell you about, but it's some fun stuff. That's promotions. February 28th against the Danbury Hattricks is our Faith and Family Night. And then February 29th, this is going to be a big one, Military Appreciation Night, brought to you by Liberty Utilities. We're going to have special military-themed jerseys that are going to be available via the Live Source app, L-I-V-E-S-O-U-R-C-E, -E, free on all Android and iOS devices, auction app, win your favorite player's jersey off the back in what's sure to be a big-time night. We know Fort Benning is going to be out in full force for February 29th against the Eastern Division leading Danbury Hattricks. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a packed Civic Center, and you're going to want to make sure that you want to get there. Well, that'll just about do it for this week's edition of River Dragons Weekly. A big thanks to Edgar Ozelinch, who was able to take some time out of his busy day to sit down and chat with us on this, uh, on this week's show. Big thanks to the folks at CTV Beam for helping us put together this show as great as it looks and produce the content we want to provide to you and of course thanks to the River Dragons offices as they are the ones who allow us to do this and again deliver all the River Dragons content you could ever need right here on TV and don't forget we got the replays on our YouTube channel as well. I'm Zach DeBozart, the play-by-play -play voice. You'll hear from me Friday night at the Civic Center 705 pregame show 735 is the puck drop. $9 general admission tickets against the Men Icebreakers. We'll see you there. Until then have a good night everybody.